Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be having a look at Cypress IO for testing. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So Cypress is a tool that's going to let you run end-to-end -end tests on your application. So um, the tool itself is kind of, you know, it's made to mimic the user. So kind of automated web testing, it's mimicking a user, clicking, typing, etc. Um, and then, yeah, you can make assertions uh, and basically run run tests on an application. So you can see some of the features here. Um, it is really quite easy to, to set up and kind of a, a minimal learning curve. And it can get quite powerful as well if you want it to. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to run kind of a, a really small test on um, Amazon, just uh, adding a, an item to the to the basket and just making sure that that works. And that will probably give you enough to, to get started running tests on, on your applications. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get right into the code. So I've just created a brand new NPM project here. So you can just do that by running uh, npm init um, hyphen y if you want to skip the, the configuration. And I've just added Cypress as a dev dependency just to have that uh, installed here. So what we're going to do is I've also added um, two scripts. So one for development experience and one for running it on CI. So Typically, when you're developing locally, we're going to run Cypress Open, and that's going to kind of open up an app. I think it's an Electron app uh, locally where you can kind of see your tests running, etc. So that's usually for development experience. Um, but if you're running things on CI, or if you want to run it uh, basically on the command line without or in, in a headless fashion, you can run um, Cypress Run. Uh, and the cool thing about Cypress Run is it actually also records um, the takes of the test, or so actually records them into a video format, MP4s, and, and you know adds them to whatever directory you've you've got listed. But yeah, if you add one of these scripts here, so um, dev Cypress open, and I'm just going to run the dev script here. So I'm just going to hit play. That's just going to run npm uh, run dev. Uh, and like I said, this is going to open up the kind of the Cypress um, application. So because this is the first time I'm running this, what you'll notice is Cypress has actually added a bunch of um, directories uh, and the directory structure to my application. So let's just have a look at what it's done there for a moment and see how it's structured. And then we can kind of uh, have a quick look at the tests. So we have the Cypress JSON uh, at the very top level. It's a JSON object that you're going to basically be able to, to configure all things uh, about Cypress. Um, we're just going to leave it blank here, um, but in theory, you could do things like you know changing the you know directory names, changing locations of things, etc. Uh, but we don't need to worry about that for kind of the scope of this video. Uh, and then you can see it's created a Cypress directory with four directories in it. And this can look a bit overwhelming at first, but um, it's really quite simple. So for the most part, you can ignore, I guess, all of these other than integration is the most important one. But let's just quickly go over what each of them uh, mean. So fixtures is basically a directory that's going to hold um, basically sample data that you might want to use across the whole application. So you can, you can see here that it's just got an example JSON file with JSON objects. So in theory, you could use the uh, Cypress API to import these kind of um, JSON files. Um, we're not going to use these, so we can just ignore this um, here. I'll skip over the integration directory. We'll come back to that because that's where we're going to be doing most of our work. So plugins basically allows you to um, hook into the Cypress lifecycle and basically update you know the, the Cypress itself um, while it's running. So in here, you might do things like uh, uh, add preprocessors, um, you know, like add you know TypeScript, etc. And there's a bunch of, I guess, plugins that you might add as well. Um, again, for the scope of this video, for when you're starting out, you can essentially ignore the plugins. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, and the final one here is support. So support is you know the one that you might actually be likely to to use um, after kind of the integration one. And this basically allows you to add custom Cypress commands. Um, or custom commands onto the Cypress API or override uh, existing commands. So um, if you jump into commands here, I think it's been extended. So let me just open this up a bit. Yeah, you can add your own, um, you can add your own commands and your own functions, and then we can use them. So we, we might have a quick look at this later on. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to this one. And finally, your integration directory. Uh, and this is basically where all your tests go. So inside here, you can see they've already added a bunch of tests. So if I head back over to the app here, the kind of Cypress app, we open this, what we can see is all our integration tests. They're split by directory. So this is a nice way to organize them. Um, and then you can see all your different specs, specifications, or basically your, your test files, right? And typically what you might want to do is you can run all of them, but I can open just a specific one. So I'm going to open this actions spec here. So each of these represent an actual test um, in your test file. So you can see all of them here. And then on the right hand side, you kind of have the actual browser window where it's running the test. And you can see it's actually, you know, going to a URL, you can see the, the view of the test. So you can actually see the test being carried out in real time. And that's basically the, the gist of it here. So if I, for example, move this to the right, so this um, type into a DOM element, if we go over to the examples and action spec. Let's close this. We can see that the first test here is type into a DOM element. So you can see it. You can see it right there. 
Um, and you can actually open up the test and you can see all the steps within the test. So all these steps within the test here are all represented within this kind of test runner. And it's got this kind of snapshot functionality where you can actually kind of scroll over or even click onto to these and you can see every step that it took. So you can see here, it visited you know, this, this site, then it tried to get um, an element called uh, with the class of action email, and then it's typed fake emails. So if I click just before this, you can see that this um, email input is empty. And if I click onto the next one, or highlight over it, just here, you can see that the fake email has been entered. So you can kind of scroll through all the steps and this is really good for things like debugging, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can see your assertions. So again, typically you're gonna be you know, typing, uh, clicking, you know, doing whatever uh, a user usually does. And then you might have some assertions uh, along the way. Um, yeah, and that's it. So let's have a quick look at the syntax and then we can uh, go on and write our own tests. So Cypress is built on top of the Mocha and Chai test framework. So some of this kind of syntax, et cetera, might be a bit familiar to you if you are uh, if you know about them. So you can see here that um, we have uh, kind of a, you know, before each hook and we have the CY, which is basically your, your Cypress API. Um, and all we're doing here, CY visit, this is the thing you're gonna do probably the start of most of your tests, you're gonna visit a, a URL. Um, and then the, the kind of the, the typical fashion is you're going to get an element, or you're going to fetch some sort of element on the screen, and then you're going to uh, you know perform an action on that element, and then you might do some sort of assertions. So here, CY get, so we're getting a selector, like I said, the action email. We're typing something into it, and you can kind of you know chain things. You can type, you can click, etc. But we can also do assertions. So there's some um, assertion APIs. In this case, uh, should is you know the ones that you might use most of the time. Um, and you can see here that this should takes in a chainer and this is where the kind of the, the chai test framework comes in and you have basically a bunch of um, different options here uh, for kind of you know chaining or your assertions um, and then you have the value on the right hand side which should hopefully match this uh, this kind of assertion here and that will essentially you know pass or fail uh, on your test so here it's just checking that um, it should have the value uh, that's typed in so this is a pretty kind of basic test but you can see how, how that works um, and yeah, that's, I mean, it can get a lot more powerful than that, but that, that's the absolute basic. So we're just gonna go ahead and write our own test and uh, yeah, see how it works. So I'm just gonna create a new test in the integration directory. So I'm just gonna do it in the root directory here. Um, I'm just gonna call this amazon.spec.js, um, that's fine. And then we're just gonna copy over um, this reference. This, so this just gives you nice typings uh, in, the, in the IDE. And then we're going to actually just head over to real Amazon here and just see how we're going to write our tests. So what we want to do for our test is pretty simple. We just want to come into the Amazon website. We want to add, add some text, hit search, you know, click on an item, add it to the basket, and then check that the um, something add basket here and check that the price um, is there. So you can see uh, I've got two items there because I've just run that before. But yeah, really, we should just see the one item. So that's all we want to do for our test. Um, a quick tip. So typically when you're um, doing any kind of uh, automated web, either scraping or testing, you can always just open up the console and look for the item that you want to interact with and you can right click and do copy selector. So most of the time you're going to be dealing with selectors uh, and you can copy the selector and then if I just paste that selector there, you can see that this selector happens to have an ID. So that's kind of a good way to, to search for it. But you always, yeah, you always want to make sure that um, that there's only you know the one ID or you always want to make sure that you can actually select it that way. So you can always use document.query, you know, selector or query selector all and just pass in that selector and just make sure that it references exactly what you want. So this is typically how I go about figuring out which elements to press. Obviously if you're also you know testing your own application, you're gonna have all the IDs and all the area labels, etc. Um in the code so you can also just just use that so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to write out the test here and we can kind of walk through it hopefully it'll just be you know easy to, to read and understand and then we can just run it see how it works so first thing we want to do is um yeah create our an actual test so this should all be familiar if you're you know used to doing testing in, in kind of the javascript world so as an item to a basket we're going to use the cypress api to visit uh, amazon.co.uk um, and then we're going to get um the input in this case with a name of field keyword. So I could have used the ID. In this case, I wanted to use um, the, the input with a name here as well. Um, you can basically do whatever selector you want. So I'm just kind of, you know, trying to show you there's, there's different ways. And then we're just going to type into this, the, the item that we're looking for, in this case, Super Mario 3D World. Um, and then we're going to get the uh, nav search button. And this time I'm using the ID and then we're going to click on it. And then after that, we're going to do CY contains. So contains basically, it brings you back a reference of you know, the, the item that you're searching for, the selector, but also kind of does an assertion basically as well. So if this doesn't exist, it's going to fail. So in a sense, this is just making sure that the item 
is being shown. Um, but at the same time, it's bringing back the reference. So then we can click on it. And um, after that, we're going to um, click the add to cart button. And finally, we can just do a couple of assertions. Um, so we can just get the, the sub cart area. So that's this area here. And we can just check that it contains some text, one item and the right kind of price. So now if we head over to the, um, yeah, the application there, we can see that this is just run all the, the, the test here. It's gone to Amazon, it's gone down. Um, it's, you know, checks that it's contained the, the items clicked through and you can see the very end there, the assertions that it's, you know, it contains one item and it contains the, the price there. You can see as I hover over them, it kind of highlights exactly where it found them. So that's the test passing. Perfect. So that's pretty much everything you need to know. I think I did mention that I would share one other thing, which is about the uh, support or the commands here. So sometimes you get in a situation where you might want to basically, um, you might be kind of using these same you know, kind of selectors or kind of combinations uh, a lot. So most of the time I'd actually recommend just, you know, you can extract these out to a, to a function and, and kind of reuse them. But sometimes it can be useful to use this kind of uh, commands support. So for example, um, this here, you might be doing a lot of searches in your application uh, and instead of, you know, typing all these couple of lines or it might be more, you might just want to abstract that away. So you could abstract that out into a kind of its own function, but you could also uh, abstract it out into kind of a Cypress command. So if I head over here into this Cypress commands here, we can just um, duplicate this guy and you can see here, so Cypress commands and you can either override an existing one or add a new one. So you can add a new one called, let's say search. Uh, and this just takes in a function um, and that function is exactly what you're going to use. So for example, uh, we can pass in a search term argument here and then the functionality is just exactly what we had before, but we'd be using the um, search term instead of the text here. So in our test, what we can do now is instead of kind of typing this out, we can just do cy dot search because it's that function and we can pass in our you know search term. So that's just another way uh, another way of doing it. Um, for me personally, most of the time, I'm just gonna be extracting this out to a, just a you know, function that can be reused because I just find that a bit easier to, to kind of find. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Um, you know, Cypress, again, is a, is a lot more powerful than you know what I've just covered here, but this is definitely enough to hopefully get you started and give you kind of a fundamental understanding. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.